So I have a bit of an idea, and that idea is that I really want to revisit um, all of the Sarah Dessen books that I read when I was younger. She was an author that I absolutely loved when I was a teenager. I devoured her books, and her books really, I feel like, made an impact on me when I was younger, even though I know on the surface they look like just YA contemporary romance. And I'm just interested to see how they've aged. Um, I know Sarah Dessen has like a Netflix deal at the moment to get some of her works adapted and I'm really interested to see how that goes. So I want to go through and revisit some of my old favorites and <laughs> see what I think of them rereading them 10 years later. So I currently have Someone Like You out on audio. Someone Like You was the first Sarah Dessen book that I ever read. Um, it follows Haley and her best friend in high school gets pregnant and she starts dating this bad boy named Megan. Like, I can't believe that I still remember all of these plot points. Um, but one thing that I really remember is that it really showed that time in your life when you start pulling away from your parents, um, you know, in that normal teenage way where you start becoming more of an independent person and I remember that being outlined very well in the book like that being something that really stuck with me so I'm gonna listen to it and get back to you for that how uh, I'll listen to it and get back to you and tell you how that goes okay so I'm gonna be heading out to dinner with my family but tonight at work I'm gonna be listening to the someone like you audiobook it's seven hours so I should be able to listen to it all at one go. Um, I'm a little nervous as to how that's gonna go because this isn't quite my favorite. I think my favorite is The Truth About Forever, but this is probably my second favorite. I think as far as I can remember, it's not really a romance. I think it's definitely more about Haley finding herself and her friendship, but we'll see if maybe I'm remembering that wrong. Uh, Someone Like You and That Summer were stories that were combined together to do the Mandy Moore adaptation, so I'm interested to see what I remember from that. I'm a little bitter. I almost beat the high score by two. I played it twice. Next time. Hi. Guys, look at my jalapenos. They're so pretty. Look at all of them. Got some babies. Where's the baby one? The baby one, where is it? I just saw it. Right here. Do you see it? Right there. It's oh. a baby. Okay. I'll all right, but where are our tomatoes in here? Oh yeah, there's some in here and they here. Really got to turn red. A lot of tomatoes. Yeah, they're gonna turn red eventually. Well, I don't know how to... Whoa, that's fine then. It's got some. Ooh, there's some over you here. Dun dun dun! Look at those. I see, I see baby one. Where's a baby one? that baby one. Even more tomatoes. Guys, we have so many tomato plants. <laughs> like, I'm serious. We have like 15 tomato plants. And then this is our flaming cucumber plant. You can see one right there. Look at it. And then you know, there's another one down here. There we are. So I did listen to the entirety of Someone Like You last night at work. It actually ended up being shorter than I realized. It was only, I think, like a little over six hours. Um, and I can totally see why I loved it when I was younger. I still enjoyed it this time around. Um, I do like, I mean, the Sarah Dessen formula is basically a 16-year-old girl going through something finds herself, which I think at that age was always going to work for me. Um, what I did like about this is that it wasn't about a romance. And I think like very few of her stories are actually romance. Like I can think of a handful where it does end in a relationship. And so this one, Haley falls for like the bad boy 
but he's really more of a conduit for her to test her independence and push the boundaries of this new relationship with her mother with like new dynamics of her being more independent and not being necessarily a child. Um, I thought it was interesting that the book opened up with the death of her best friend's boyfriend and then later in the book we find out that she's pregnant and so I thought a lot of things were handled really well. I remember always loving the friendship between Haley and Scarlett. Uh, maybe that's because like my best friend growing up was like also a redhead and we were really close and I probably totally thought like that's us. <laughs> so I'm thinking since I'm thinking about doing these for a few of my favorite Destin books and the ones that are going to get adapted, I should probably have like a set of questions to like how they hold up. So this one I would say was like almost exactly what I remembered, which leads me to believe that I probably reread this more than once. I, I remembered very specific scenes. I remembered almost like quotes from this book. I think I reread it so many times. So this one was basically exactly what I remembered. So themes that stuck out to me, like I said at the beginning of this, like going all over the place vlog, um, the theme of like your relationship to your parents, and I think especially your mom, like this was mostly focused on her relationship with her mother and how it changed as she became a teenager. And I remember that stuck out to me so much because there's like a very specific thing she keeps going back to. And that's the fact that she has this picture of their vacation to the Grand Canyon last year. And she talks about like, that was the girl I was then. And like, this represents the relationship I had at that point with my mother. And now I feel like it's totally different because now I go out with Scarlett and we sneak out and like she has a boyfriend and like the things I do are so much more adult and I feel very different to the girl I was in that picture. And she constantly refers to that picture. That picture keeps showing up at certain points. So I felt like that theme was like very obvious. I mean, I feel like Sarah Destin books like deal with a lot of things. So this one like had teen pregnancy and it had like a peer pressure and like vaguely like a boyfriend pressuring you into sleeping with him. So like, yeah, her books always like deal with those topics, but, but in a way that I feel like isn't didactic. I think maybe Dreamland was the only one that I felt like this was like an issues novel or like this book was like about an issue in mind and like that's what it was based upon first before the story which is fine um and in the back she talks about like how she had personal experience with that issue and that's why she wanted to write this book so like that makes sense i'm sorry this is like all over the place <laughs> it was my number two and so far i don't have a whole lot to compare it to so i guess um, Haley as a protagonist was kind of bland. Macon is very forgettable, I would say, in the lineup of Dustin Love Interests. He is very close to the bottom. Um, right up above the, like, very obviously problematic or, like, very obviously, like, we do not like this guy. This guy is meant to be bad. Like, there's no redeeming qualities to this guy characters. He just didn't have a lot. Like, he was meant to be complicated, but eh. I just like wasn't into it. So the next book that I want to read is That Summer, which like I said, the first Sarah Dustin book I read was actually a mass market paperback find up of someone like you in that summer. And like I mentioned, that's the, the two stories they use for the Mandy Moore adaptation. It was really weird because they like picked and choose plot points and like character traits from each one. So I felt like the story was kind of a mishmash because it really wasn't either one, but it was both. So, so far, like, in this reread, I still, like, I get it, and it's still pretty high up there. Um, I still think my number one is The Truth About Forever. And then my number two was Someone Like You. I would say maybe my number three was This Lullaby. And This Lullaby is actually one of the ones that is getting adapted for the Netflix deal. I'm interested how that's going to go, because I think Dexter, as a love interest, is a little pushy and doesn't take no for an answer at first and I don't know that that's a approach that's aged well. I think Along for the Ride is another one that's getting adapted. It was like three books. It was like This Lullaby, Along for the Ride, and Once and for All. Once and for All was published after I had already stopped reading Sarah Dessen, so I will have to read that like for the first time. Um, Along for the Ride, I remember bits and pieces of it, but I don't know. In my mind, it was fine. 
uh, that one didn't really stand out to me in any way. Uh, I remember it's about a girl who's like visiting her dad and her dad is like a young wife and a small child and she like meets some guy who likes motocross. Am I thinking of the wrong one? No, that's the right one. I was getting it confused with lock and key. So I'll have to do some thinking and come up with like my definitive <laughs> like list of the ones that I've read and see with this reread if it puts things into context differently. So I kind of feel like this was all over the place. Like I said, the next one I want to read is That Summer, which what I remember is that it's about a girl whose parents are getting divorced. I think the dad is getting remarried to a younger woman um, who's like a weather, a weather girl at a local news station. And, or maybe like the sister's getting married. And she's mad because she liked the sister's previous boyfriend better. It's like a weird story. And I remember being like, what? When I finished it. So I'm interested to see if like maybe I just didn't appreciate it. Or if it's a story that's like missing something. Or if there was like too much subtext that like went over my teenage head. So because this one is like probably on the bottom of Sarah Dustin books that I've enjoyed. Um, but anyway, let me... Let me know what you guys have thought of this, like, really rambly all over the place, me revisiting my uh, teen faves deal. I have been living, like, my best 2005 life over here. I have been re-watching One Tree Hill and listening to, like, Dashboard Confessional and my emo playlist and, like, rereading Sarah Dustin. So I am basically, like, 14 to 16 years old again over here. Um... So yeah, probably the next ones I'm going to read. I'm going to read that summer, and then I'm going to read the three that are optioned for Netflix adaptations. So we'll see how that goes. But anyway, thank you so much for watching this uh, chatty, rambly vlog, or my attempt at it anyway. And I hope to see you again soon. And let me know what Sarah Dustin books you think I should read, or which one you liked, or... If you're watching this and you've never read Sarah Dessen and are never going to and you just watch this for me, then thank you so much. All right, see you soon.